Thank you so much for taking the time out this evening to um, participate in our first SFO UK virtual rep induction. Um, I really hope that you will leave today's um, session clearer on what we expect from you and signpost appropriately. And firstly, let me start by saying congratulations as well. We've been successful with um, this year's applications. I know that you'll use this as a stepping stone towards your overall ENT career, and it's a pleasure to be able to help you in these early stages. Feel free to show your, your faces. This might be the only time I get to see you all in this virtual era. Um, and if you have any questions, um, we will have a session at the end for Q's and A's. Okay. Right. Fine. So um over the next hour or so, um Hopefully, our SFO UK president will pop in and say a quick hi, but um, I'm really grateful that we have Amira here who will talk a bit about our SFO UK conference. Um, have any of you actually attended our conference before? It's normally an annual occasion. Yeah. 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 Okay, fine. So we'll hear a bit more about that. I will obviously start off the uh, representation introduction with a bit more about the year, what to expect, and um, hopefully that will be really, really useful for you. And thank you so much, Bavish, who I hope is signed in, and obviously Sierra, who I've spoken to now, for just going through your year of experience, and we can learn a bit about them and um, how they made their year um, advantageous for their future applications as well. And we will talk about an SFO UK job advert, which we have recently um, posted, which hopefully some of you will be happy to apply for. So SFO UK, the, the general ethos um, of our committee is to raise the awareness of ENT as a career amongst medical students. When I was an F1, um, I conducted a national survey um, so rough, many, many years ago, but I did find that overall 11 days of, of medical school is dedicated towards ENT, which isn't really a lot when you consider it's typically a five to six year program. Um, so it is hard for medical students to find out the realities of ENT and know enough about it to decide on whether it is a career for them. So we, we, try our best to raise the awareness of ENT, but also to encourage junior trainees to consider ENT as a career eventually. And of course, there is limited exposure of ENT in, in medical school. Um, therefore, we promote and are actually at the forefront of, of creating um, syllabuses for medical students and foundation trainees so that when they graduate from medical school, they have the basic principles of ENT. Remember, even if you do not end up as an ENT consultant, if you do choose to go to the GP world or paediatrics or accident and emergency department, you will definitely come across ENT. So it has its branches of many other specialties. So the timeline in ENT, most of you are aware of this now, on average, it can take about 17 years to uh, become a consultant from the first day in medical school. Um, it's a long journey. It's a vocation, however, and we never stop learning. So hopefully with this SFO UK post, it will start you thinking about how can I demonstrate to interviewers? How can I show 
a commitment to specialty. Well, if you are an FFO UK representative, you are definitely showing uh, a commitment to the specialty. Um, you are, you will be representing ENT at a national and international level. And this next 12 months will not be a spoon fed uh, role. And as a result, you will show real good capacity to think beyond the obvious and better problem solving to achieve the duties that we expect of you. And of course, you will de demonstrate an even better analytical and flexible mind. Now, we do expect that you will continue on attending your placements and attending your jobs. And as well as this role, you will develop and demonstrate to interviewers and also cement this in your portfolio that you are able to manage time and prioritize your workload, as well as balance urgent and important demands, as well as follow instructions. So there is a method to our madness. OK, so we're essentially an umbrella to support you in demonstrating specific person specifications, which are assessed during medical school assessed at core surgical level, registrar level, and also assessed again when you have your consultant um, interview. So congratulations. Again, you are an official representative for SFO UK. Um, at the moment, we have about 168 representatives. Um, so we do have quite a heavy admin, and please forgive us if we do not always reply straight away, something we're working on. Um, but what we do expect you to do is to like and follow our SFO UK social media pages, not for the followers, but we disseminate a lot of important information through the streams of Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And part of your role for us is to provide this information to the members and the followers and people within your medical school and your your local hospital and region. Now, we will also sometimes present um, information that's specifically for you via our social media pages. So that's why it's important to follow us um, and get this information firsthand. Part of the role of SFO UK um, representatives are to facilitate, organize, and support ENT events and activities in your area. So not just SFO UK events, but anything ENT. And if you actually come across a really good event um, that you think, think we should know about, please let us know, and we'll be happy to advertise it as well. What we want to do is simply to raise the awareness and also support any grassroots events um, that is making a local impact that we won't be aware of. Part of being successful, I believe, um, throughout your career is to learn the art of collaboration and networking. You can't be successful by yourself. So collaborating with other deputy SFO UK representatives, finding out where, what the uh, ENT surgical societies are and letting them know who you are and what, what you stand for is really important. It might be easier through collaboration to organize more regional events too, which will look excellent um, on your CV. Now, when I was an F1, I didn't have an ENT job in the first 12 months, which I think is probably pretty standard nationally. But what I did was on the very first day, I went to the ENT department I spoke to the secretaries, I found out who was the most friendliest, um, approachable consultant at the time, and I just made myself known. And through that introduction, I ended up on SFO UK um, committee, and I've, I've been on the committee ever since. So lay out of your undergraduate lead and your regional academic lead, try to find out who the latter is. Um, these roles are very thought through. So it's what we would normally do if you are keen about a career in ENT, but we're making sure that you definitely do do it. OK, so it's something that will benefit you in the long run. Now, the academic representatives are um, similar. We do also expect you to fulfill the duties that I've just explained. But in addition, you are the official point of contact for your academic program. So we additionally expect you to create a list of ideas and opportunities for doctors on how they might be able to develop their academic ENT portfolio. 
So this post is two years as opposed to the regional representative role, which is one year. Because of this, we expect a strong two-year portfolio, which illustrates events, projects related to the academic ENT arena, but also you know, on a local, regional and national level. You may be randomly selected to present your Ethical UK activities at the end of your tenure. Now, the climax of your 12-month tenure with us is the SFO UK event and project, and this is mandatory. What we have done to help us streamline the process and also to track the events is we've created an application form, which I have put here. I will email it to you if I haven't done so already. And what's important about the form is ensuring you have a local project lead, which can be a consultant or registrar. Additionally, if you do want your your event to be um, posted on our social media pages, particularly YouTube, you can also just make a little note of this and we will assess um, your your recorded session and see if this can be done. But we're really keen to um, support you in any way possible, but it's mainly with advertising. Now, many years ago, we used to provide materials and merchandise for uh, career days, career workshops, but unfortunately, we do not provide this um, at the moment. Hopefully, that will change in time. Um, but please email us if you have any questions. A lot of the time, uh, the most common two questions that I receive are, do we provide certificates for the attendees? Unfortunately, we do not, but there's something you can easily um, arrange locally. And the second question that I have gotten um, is if you co-present or co-lead on an event, would your colleagues get an SFO UK certificate? Unfortunately, we only would give it to you as an SFO UK rep. Okay. Um, now, keep event your ev um, evidence of the event or all events throughout your tenure as um, up to date as possible. So do it as you go along. And examples of evidence would be feedback forms of PowerPoints or photos during the event. We just need to make sure it definitely did happen. Um, and also, it's just interesting for us to see what's actually going on there since we are often not there in person. Now, we have had a, such a wide range of projects and um, actual ENT events that have been arranged by our reps have been really, really the work that's been put in has been really impressive. Um, the ones that come to mind, um, there's been a recent on-site simulation day and that was uh, looked like it went well. Career webinars, uh, for instance, Life as an ENT Registrar has been um, organized. A revision series for DONS, I think we've only had one of these um, events, which I thought was quite good thinking, and also a virtual lecture series on common ENG presentations to the emergency department. Now, a word of advice, if I was doing an event, I would try to do one that I led, organized, and delivered. The reason being is most of the specialty applications, and that includes ENT, specifies that you do this to get maximum points. So why not kill two birds with one stone and do an event where you are clearly leading and delivering some part of it and generally organizing it, okay? So the second example, uh, a career webinar, Life as an ENG Registrar, you will not have necessarily led the talk, but if you could at least participate and try to have something to say during the webinar, that would also technically correspond to you leading and organizing and delivering at least part of it, okay? Now, this is an example of the PDF advert, which we expect you to send back to us with the completed SFO UK um, event application. Now, just pay attention to how simple the title is, easy to read, good font size. The colours are akin to our SFO UK logo, so varying shades of lilac and purple, and you need a clear registration link. 
So that can be the QR code here or a hyperlink that we can, um, or the followers can just easily tap into. So this is what we would um, advertise across our social media pages. So these are our social media pages. Um, hopefully you have followed us now. So as I mentioned before, we've got Instagram, we have Facebook and we have Twitter. Now, what's as not Easter fine at the moment, um, we've been amalgamated into the e and UK website before. You may have known, I um, can't see you guys at the same time, one second, that um, we were a standalone website, a lovely purple one, but now we have been um, amalgamated to in the e and in our parent website, essentially. And this is the link that I found um, by Googling SFO UK ENT. So it's a bit hard to memorize. So this is the easiest way to find us. And it's the first option um, in Google. And you can always just bookmark it so you can find this a bit more easier. Now, the advantage of our SFO website is we have so much information that can signpost you to other opportunities. So SFA, SFO UK prizes. Um, also, you will have information about learning materials, find out a bit more about the committee. And you, we will also have the current SFO rep list, which can be accessed through the website. Now, if you have a look, if that's okay, make sure that your contact email is correct and your name is correct. I'm sure it will be, but if it's not, please send me an email and I'll correct this straight away. Right, so end of tenure requirements. So 12 months will go by really quickly, um, but you have a head start for the first time compared to the other rep representatives. So I sent you all, hopefully you've all received this document, which just outlined the starter induction checklist, just to get you obviously started. And a lot of this, um, information is needed at the end of the 12 months. So thank you to those who've emailed me your membership. Um, we have checked and most of you, actually 95% of you are ENT UK members. So thank you so much. Um, if anyone hasn't made their membership active, please can you do that now? And um, we do check again um, later on. So mandatory uh, requirements, as I mentioned before, introduce yourself to local undergraduate uh, lead, academic lead, and also surgical society if you can. Organize at least one SFO UK ENT event and um, ENT related project if and or up to you. You can do both. You can do one, but you must do at least one. And uh, follow us on our social media pages for further information. Screenshots are fine. Um, screenshots of emails are fine screenshots of the you following our social media pages is completely fine as well and um, it's more fun to go through your actual um, powerpoints and uh, photos for your SFO UK event uh, but again screenshots of consultants saying that you have done it is completely fine as well um, now this is also new something that we decided to do to just streamline the end of tenure admin. So this is a Google form link that I will send to you so that you can um, put in your evidence and you'll also be able to upload your evidence as well. Um, if you are struggling with uploading your evidence, it's still fine to email me, but we do need to complete the form for tracking purposes Midway through your tenure, that's about six months, I will send you an email reminder. It might be from me or it might be from our parent SFO uh, Gmail account. Second reminder will be within the final four weeks for you to actually sub begin submitting your evidence. And please allow for roughly 14 days from the end of your tenure for your letter certificate to be processed and a little bit more time for it to be actually sent to you. So the earlier you send it to us, if you have completed your duties, the better for you. If you have submitted it after the end of your tenure, the processing time might lengthen, okay? 
if you are struggling to complete your duties and that can be for personal reasons or you just were unable to manage conflict you know competing other duties it's completely fine but just let me know early as possible and we can work together on a solution so thank you so much that's it from me for now just share if anyone has any questions um feel free to ask me if you now um amira will jump in shortly um is that more or less clear clearer than reading the documents I emailed you a few months ago. Yeah, I couldn't see your face. Yeah, no, really clear. Good. OK, fine. So um, I will hand over to Amira if she is ready. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, Michaela. I'm going to actually have to go after the next person because I'm still in, in a situation where I can't um, present I can't talk I don't have an actual presentation but um I'll jump in after the next one is that all right no, no. yeah absolutely fine so um I'll nip over to Babbage is that okay are you ready Babbage that's great thanks yeah I'll get my uh, slides up just give me one moment yeah. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Babesh. Um, can you see my slides first of all, everyone? Yep. Yep, great. Yep. So I'm a, I'm an ENT themed core trainee in Colchester um, in the East of England deanery. Um, and I was an SFO rep uh, for about four years from 2017 all the way to end of last year. So I thought in this talk, I'll just go through sort of um, a timeline really of my experiences with ENT and a bit about sort of what I've tried to do uh, within ENT to promote the specialty, which hopefully will give you some ideas uh, during your tenure um, as SFO reps. And again, just to reiterate what uh, Michaela said, congratulations on your new role. I hope you really enjoy working with SFO UK. Um, and there's, you know, it's a very exciting time right now to be involved with ENT. So just going way back to sort of 2016 I started um, sort of the clinical part of my medical course having really no idea you know what I wanted to do surgery or medicine or anything else really but just it happened to be that I picked a research block um, for six weeks with one of the ENT consultants in Allen Brooks Hospital Cambridge looking at a very niche condition which is still niche now but back then I had no idea what it was about eustachian tube dysfunction uh, and did some research with um, James Tyson and Matthew Smith, and also had time to observe in clinics and in theatre and to get a real feel of what ENT is all about. And I really enjoyed my time with the team there. Um, it was nice to see a wide mix of uh, patients, both from very young to very old. And the breadth of ENT is also very exciting uh, with opportunity to be involved in otology, rhinology, head and neck, facial plastics. So there's a real scope of um subspecialism in ENT um and at the time I realized well actually apart from that sort of chosen rotation um there isn't really much in terms of ENT exposure in medical school um certainly not where I was from in Cambridge back in 2017 and I was encouraged to apply to first of all look into SFO and I realized that there was um a chance to be an SFO rep and that post then was vacant so I went for it and I was accepted for that position. So that was the end of, sort of 2017. And then going on to 2000, um, the next academic year, uh, myself and a few other colleagues in, um, in Cambridge set up the University of Cambridge ENT Society because we felt as if Although that most universities have surgical societies, um, there tends to be a focus more on sort of orthopedics, general surgery, and there's a lack of sort of perhaps um, interest to promote ENT events. So we felt a dedicated society um, with input from SFO might be useful. And we did actually um, host a few events throughout the year that year. Then I sort of, having thought about, well, what is lacking within ENT regionally and what can we do differently? I decided to sort of write a very short letter 
in uh, a mainstream ENT journal to sort of highlight what I thought we could do differently um, and we can do better really both to promote the specialty regionally. I sort of spoke about the success of SFO to date in terms of the national conferences and other events but I thought we need to sort of have better regional promotion both with um, 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 improved curriculum but also with um, regional career fairs to try and sort of improve interest in the specialty. Now it, it's it's so good really um, sort of conveying your, your thoughts and opinions but actually it's, it's best to put your um, words into action. So in the start of 2018 uh, alongside colleagues from Norwich we set up a regional ENT conference. Now until this point SFO had run a national conference yearly, but this was one of the first regional undergraduate and foundation ENT conferences and we really were amazed by the reception it received. With over 100 delegates across the country and we had some very, um, very good speakers, both regionally and also nationally. You know, lucky to have um, speakers such as Professor Barnes from Cambridge, Professor Carl Philpott from Norwich. Uh, Miss Emma Stapleton from Manchester and, and many others and it was really good to see the interest there was actually in ENT at an undergraduate level and also at a foundation level um, and many people um, in their feedback kept saying actually you know I wish we had more events in our local regions whether that was in the northeast or in Wales or Scotland um, so that was good to sort of see that there was interest in ENT across the country but actually maybe we can do more regionally in, in other pockets. So I decided to set up sort of a, 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 a collaborative group of keen junior doctors both in, in east of England but also sort of from across um, the country to sort of try and improve um, our ability to, de to de um, deliver events in ENT. We held a regional one-day simulation course in, in Norwich um, which used simulation models to teach medical students basic ENT skills and then subsequently we developed a ENT specific online question bank based upon the SFO undergraduate curriculum um, to provide better resources for undergraduates who will be faced with some ENT content in their medical school finals and this is still available online at the link shown here. And just going forwards in the last couple of years uh, during the pandemic of course many of us moved to virtual learning and so um, we held a virtual teaching program uh, covering ENT content for medical students for the, East, the um, University of East Anglia medical students and then finally after all this time I managed to have my, my first ENT rotation as a junior doctor for four months and I absolutely loved it um, and that really reaffirmed my interest in ENT. And then going forwards in April 2021 last year, uh, led by some of our very impressive um, uh, medical students from Cambridge, who I believe one of them now is one of our reps um, for SFO, um, uh, Emily Wilson, we held the second East of England uh, undergraduate and foundation ENT conference, which was now a virtual format. And it was again well received with more than um, 70, 80 delegates, again supported by um, you know, uh, registrars and consultants from across the country. And following that, I took on an a, uh, ENT themed core training post and I'm now in Colchester where I am today. So obviously I've shown you what I've done in four years, but I've sort of hopefully you can see that there is scope to do a lot of stuff as an SFO rep. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a big event. You can start small, for example, doing career events or um, seeking support from your local hospital ENT departments um, and I'm sure registrars locally will be happy to deliver medical school teaching um, on your behalf. And just going through bits and pieces that I've done more recently now that I'm a core trainee in ENT, um, I supported ENT UK with their recent induction package which is now a set of webinars uh, to standardise ENT induction for new junior doctors and you can find that on the ENT website. Um, I'm now also a Integrate committee member and, the, and just for those who are in their sort of foundation years and part of the SFO um, uh, regional rep you can actually take part in Integrate projects. Um, there's lots of ENT Integrate projects both in otology, head and neck and rhinology um, and many of which are looking for 
um, local leads um, where your opportunity to get involved with collaborative research and um, take part in, in, in you know, cutting edge um, research in ENT. And then more recently, working with one of our SFO reps from Pool, Leo Gundel, we've set up a multi-centre survey looking at uh, the quality of ENT induction across the country. And this is ongoing study, which we'll be excited to reveal the results in the next couple of months. So what is my advice for all of our, all of our, uh, our new reps? So first of all, I think the key thing really is to think about is that it's about collaboration. None of what I've done in the past couple of years has been on my own. It's through working with other like-minded individuals with an interest in ENT, with an interest in medical education and an interest in teaching. And, you know, form a network with your regional rep. So, for example, if you are the a medical school rep, find out who your foundation rep and your core training rep form a WhatsApp group and work together um, there's, you can do so much more by working in partnership with your peers. Um, second of all, reach out to your local ENT departments, um, um, many of whom will be very happy for you to be involved um, in local projects and audits, but would also be very um, interested in uh, supporting your local events. And I'm sure many registrars in your region would be happy to um, deliver teaching or to deliver career talks. Don't be afraid to think big. Certainly when I first set up the uh, the first East of England ENT conference, I first thought to myself, God, this sounds like a big task. You know, will anyone take us seriously? Will anyone really think that what we're doing will add much value? But actually, I was very surprised to see um, the interest we got from um, and the support we got from um, our peers and colleagues and supervisors from Cambridge and Norwich. And it turned out to be a very impressive and well received event. So you know, don't be afraid to think big, but also don't be afraid to think outside the box. Um, you know, for example, um, when I set up the Ascent Question Bank, um, it's not, not necessarily an event per se, but it's a useful tool that can be used by your peers uh, for years to come and be accessible online. So, you know, um, for example, you can sort of make YouTube webinars, you can make um, educational games or other sorts of initiatives. So don't be so don't think you have to sort of stick to a traditional lecture based or webinar format. You can do much more than that. So and, and I think, you know, in the era now where we have lots of new, exciting virtual technology, there's there's so much more you can do. But uh, most importantly, obviously, enjoy your time with SFO. Also, enjoy your time discovering and discovering ENT. Um, you know, we I think, you know, what's very important for us and for SFO in general is to see our reps go through the system and, you know, get through their training and be successful in their e and in their core training and ENT specialty application. So so, that, so um, use this as a platform um, for your future career. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to contact me, feel free to contact me on my email address. I'm happy to answer any questions. Also, if you want me to um, be involved in any of your local events, again, I'm really keen to teach and really keen to to be involved. So please feel free to contact me. Uh, but that's the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take any questions from anyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Beverage. That was that was terrific. Thank you so much for an excellent presentation. I mean, Bavish, I mean, he clearly ticked, you know, all the boxes with regards to, he was with us for two years at Saturday You Go. He'd become a permanent fixture, huh, Bavish, in our SFO <laughs> UK family. Um, but um, really impressive. And um, congratulations on your core surgical um, post. I'm sure the ST3 and the beyond will be um, quite easy for you. And before you know it, you'll be a consultant in no time. So thank you so much for the presentation. And definitely, if anyone has any questions um, for Babish, I think he kind of demonstrated not just a regional representative activity, but also academic too. So um, I think it would be very useful for, um, for you guys if you've got any further questions. Um, right, so Sierra, is it okay for you to give us a quick talk? I know you've got to go on tonight, so I'm sure um, it will be a quick one. Um, yes. So okay. I'll just mute myself okay. now. My my presentation isn't nearly as long or in, impressive, I think, as Bavesh's was. 
Um, do you want me to share my slide? I, I literally have one slide. It's not that exciting. Um, let me share that with you guys. Has that worked? Yep. Great. So um, I'm, I'm Kira. I'm also a CT1 in London and I have been an SFO rep for just one year. Um, my background is, is that I was a Manchester graduate from 2017. Then I did my foundation years in South Thames. Uh, I did do an ENT rotation as an F2. And then I did two years in Addenbrookes in Cambridge as a clinical fellow before applying for core training this year. Uh, I actually took a slightly longer winded way round to ENT, I think, than Bavesh did in that I actually wanted to be a neurosurgeon when I was at medical school. And then I saw the light and realised that there is never a happy neurosurgeon, whereas everyone in ENT is really happy and really nice. Um, and so, you know, they say you find your tribe and I think ENT is quite a nice tribe to find yourself in. So if you are, well, I suspect you are a lot of you are a bit earlier than I did, in which case, congratulations on being much more intelligent than I was and picking a good specialty early. And if you're still a bit undecided, then, you know, you've got time. And I, I that's one of the things that I always try and say to people is, is that you don't have to decide what you want to do when people seem to say that you decide what you want to do you can actually take a bit of time try a few different things it doesn't actually impact your training in the same way that i think a lot of people feel that it does so don't don't be afraid to take a bit of time out here and there and everywhere um so my sfo activity this year so i've been involved in some research i've been one of bavesh's local leads in london for his recent entsho uh, research. I've done a lot of teaching um, and that's one of the things that SFO is actually really great for is that the access to other people that are interested in ENT is not to be underestimated because although you you know you want to do it and you may or may not have a job in ENT or you may or may not have a rotation. I know at medical school I had literally a week of ENT and it was right before exams. And so I think I maybe went to two or three clinics and that was it. So I think having access to people that can talk you through things is one of the great things that SFO does. Um, and then the main thing that I've done this year is um, with one of my other compatriots, we organised a Don's head and neck revision anatomy course. So for those of you that are a bit earlier on in your medical careers, once you have graduated from medical school unfortunately exams do not finish and you then have to do further exams to get your membership to the royal colleges um so you do your mrcs part a the way it currently stands you do mrcs part a which is surgery in general and then if you want to do ent you can do something called dons which is diploma in otolaryngology head and neck surgery basically um and it's a much more ent specific exam so what we did is we organised a series of revision lectures based around the anatomy for this exam that comes up that everyone has to do. Um, my and then one of the other things that I'm currently still in the process of organising, so it's a little bit under wraps. Um, I'm trying to organise a sign language course because when I was at Manchester, I managed to do a sign language course with Sinos, who is the Manchester University um, squad. And I think that was a really great thing to do. It was something that I'd been trying to do before, but I think was a bit difficult in during the pandemic because learning sign language online, I think, is a difficult thing to do. So I was kind of waiting for in-person stuff to come back again. So I'm in the process of discussing that with King's Modern Languages Department. So I will be disseminating that information once I actually have got a formal organized package so if any of you are London based and want to be involved in that please do get in contact with me. My main pieces of advice about being an SFO rep would be seize any opportunity that is offered to you 
and there will be loads because you're part of like a really interesting group of people that are really motivated to try and disseminate ENT. Um, but also if you're organizing something, you'd be surprised how long things actually take to organize. And so get your emails in early, start thinking early and get in contact with your local surgical societies, be that via Facebook, Twitter, whatever the easiest things, just just identify yourself to them. Because then what they will do is they will think, actually, yes, this is person that I might need in the future. So by identifying yourself, you're already saying, hey, look, I'm here, I want to help. And that's not just with your, not just the ENT societies, because some universities may not have them, but with the surgical societies as well, because they will also run revision lectures. So I'm going to hopefully help out with one of the Manchester revision lectures, which they've just started up, which is um, surgical emergencies. And they've done an orthopedic one. And I've said I'll do an ENT one to them, which I think will be in the next semester. So get get in early, start being organised and you will fly through. Um, I put my email address on there, so if any of you want to get in contact with me, then you are entirely welcome to. Always happy to talk through anything that you might want to be interested or involved in, or even if you just want to ask me about training. And I've got a picture of me there, which where I look much happier and much less tired because I'm not in the middle of one of night shifts. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's all I have to really say. I will take any questions. Otherwise, do email me. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope your night was, like most ENT nights, chilled and OK. Um, but no, thank you so much as well um, for the kind words about SFO UK. Um, it's really, really appreciated because essentially that's what we wanted, is to put all of the enthusiastic, motivated, keen juniors who have the common interest of ENT, put them together network and um and just see if that helps your career is in the long term and i think it will um i never really had anyone really to talk to talk to at my level who wanted to do ent it was only until i bumped into more people at the e and um, in the interview courses did i slowly begin to build my own network so um tap into to this as you can see everyone i mean sarah was a really strong representative as well she was automatically at the forefront of my mind when I was thinking of reps to speak today. Um, several emails. The more you email me, the more I remember your names. <laughs> Guys. Famous last words, I'm sure. Um, but um, particularly her sign language course, I would say, um, shows how you can think laterally. So you can submit an idea that doesn't have to be traditionally a revision course um or a career talk both of which are also encouraged but if it has something to do with ENT that you're passionate about and you can demonstrate the underlying reason behind you wanted to um talk or deliver this particular idea we will support you so I'm really uh, excited to see how this um kind of one of a kind SFO rep sign language course goes I'm sure it's going to be great and um yeah we fully support you in this great so um let's have a couple minutes break before i um address the mirror again yeah. any questions at all can i say one last thing, I one last thing. sure on on the on, top on the of that, which is, um, uh, research if any of you uh, have been TSHO recently and you haven't already found out his recent e ENTSHO form I'm going to put it in the chat for you now um, it's basically because if you have been an ENTSHO you know what it's like you 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 walk onto the wards and you suddenly go I actually haven't been taught this at medical school and it's quite a steep learning curve so one of the things that they're trying to do is trying to formalize the way e ENTSHOs are inducted um, and it's a really great piece of piece of work. So I'm going to pop that in the chat for you guys. So if you haven't filled it in, you've been in the NTSHO, please do fill it in. Hi, Michaela. I'm uh, parked up and can uh, talk.
Michaela, I think you might be muted. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sorry. I was I was actually trying to say, are you muted? But um, yeah, I hand over to you, Amira. Is that okay? having struggles because I'm actually um, parked up um, to be able to talk to you. Um, so um, I can't access my camera right now, but um, welcome everybody. Congratulations. And it's absolutely delightful to see how many of you there are here today. Um, you know, absolutely fantastic presentations by our previous reps and, and Michaela, must I say. Um, I've been around for quite a long time. I'm a consultant now, um, but I've been involved with SFA UK for about 10 years. Um, so the idea behind the SFA UK conference originated around the time when I was actually applying for ENT. And again, um, my primary uh, objective was to do general surgery. And then I stumbled across ENT and, and quite enjoyed it um, and decided that I wanted to apply, but actually my CV had no ENT. Somebody took me to a side office, one of the uh, registrars who's a consultant somewhere now, and, and said, well, you know, you need this, 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 this. And um, I was like, well, I would never have known any of that. It took me some time to build up. Um, but the conference, really, the aim is, like Michaela said, engagement, um, giving you a stepping stone towards knowing what you need to achieve, having the opportunity to present um, posters, um, oral presentations and get prizes because it keeps you as a, a group that can actually um, see what your peers are doing and networking is so, so important. Um, and you know, it's one big happy SFO family. Um, ENT surgeons like you all said are very friendly and that's one of the things that attracted me um into ENT so with the SFO conference it's an annual event um, we also run um, some of you might have attended at BACO there's a specific SFO day but that also then gives you discounted access to the rest of the conference which is something that you should really utilize so going forward um what we really want from you as representatives is to promote, um, continue promoting with all your events and also promote the SFO conference. But we're looking for the next year and going forward is to have some facilitators as well, because a lot of work goes into this um, and a lot of help is needed on the day. And we often find that we're slightly understaffed in that um aspect and uh, i think uh, michaela and leo and everybody will attest to that um but yes yeah, so if you want to put yourself forward to be a facilitator i mean if you've not attended before then by all means attend um if you want to be a facilitator help with the practical sessions or have any new ideas if you have attended previously um that you think might be a good thing to add into the conference then please do let us know you can contact me directly or contact through the SFO um, email and Michaela can um, point you towards that. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Mira. Mira. Welcome. Um, so yeah, I attended SFO UK conference when I was in medical school and um, kept up as a core trainee and then I started helping on on the stations and um, spoke on how to essentially put together a portfolio and I did that with my colleague Alex and we've done that for the past few years. Um, it's really good conference because it's a good way to um, get used to the notion of poster presentations and oral presentations, you also get an opportunity to win a prize. So it's good practice for the um, international conference. And I think it's quite a friendly audience to present to. So um, 
I would definitely recommend you attending, even if you don't have anything to present. And for the first time, like Amira said, we are opening up um, the gates for you as reps to help us on the day with the running arounds or facilitating any of an idea creating. And this actually will lead me to my presentation. Um, can I'm just going to share one second. I think you're actually already sharing. Can you see my slides? Uh, we can't see your slides. I can see like your entire screen of the Teams meeting. OK, so let's see if you can see my slide. Can you see the SFO UK slide? No, still see your Teams meeting only. Yeah, so I'm not right so um you should be able to see my slides now yep can see you now yep perfect thank you so much Right, so um, in this virtual era and with the explosion of just general social media and engagement, we decided to um, post a job advert for an SFO UK social media content creator and assistant. Um, we have two weeks left before the um, deadline, which is May 30th at mid midnight. And um, we are actually looking to allocate two to three posts and it really is an exciting opportunity to strengthen and coordinate social media content and communication it's all about being more interactive more reactive and also to improve our engagement with our followers and our members and branding is everything as, as most of you know and we do really want to improve upon um, our branding and just having a fresh pair of eyes, fresh pair of hands to help with, with this would be amazing. Now, the job really is a flexible, fluid and broad one, but there are four main expectations of, of this job, which would be to assist with creating content for SFO UK across all social media pages, um, assist with publishing content in line with an agreed scheduling calendar, and you get to attend SFO UK and BACO conferences and um, help create highlight content. So taking photos on the day, taking videos um, and have good skills, or at least a willingness to learn with image and video editing. Um, there's even an option, depending on your confidence level, with additional um, pages or platforms, sorry, such as TikTok. So we are trying to go virtual, essentially, a viral, I should say, viral. And um, it will be good to have some younger, less wrinkly pair of hands involved just to help us um, keep up with the crowd. So do you think you can help improve our social media branding and engagement with members? If that is you, then um, we will be repeating our adverts for this post on our social media pages. If you're really, really keen, you can email me directly and I can send you um, the Google form link. And um, like I said, we have two weeks left before we go through all the applications and um, hopefully be good to have um, at least one of you in, involved. I feel like Alan Sugar now in The, in the Apprentice. <laughs> That's what he says. At least one of you will not be fired. You'll be hired. OK, perfect. So um, we're actually really on time, which is which is excellent. So we can um, let me just open up the board to um, any questions, any comments. And um, now is a really good time. I, I would like to try to arrange um, another virtual hello um 
I'll try my very best towards the end of the year just to touch base with you. Because one of the, the things that I noticed over the last few years was um, that loss of touch, because it is a national venture. And um, it's just communication via emails. And sometimes I do call if a couple of the reps if they had, you know, really pressing concerns. But um, it is really lovely to see everyone's faces. Um, at um, one of our current SFO UK content creators, Leo Gundel, he has also been successful in becoming an academic rep for us. Um, he had a really good idea. And um, he thought we could screenshot as many of, hello, hello there, it's hello. <laughs> nice to see you. And I love, is that a bottle of wine in the back or is it olive oil? I don't know. Uh, actually, actually. <laughs> so it's really good to, to, to see you again in person as well. Um, and he had a really good idea that we could probably screenshot as many of our, our photo faces and we can put this in our social media pages as well. Um, I don't know if you have any words. Uh, Leo's been excellent. He's taught me to have more confidence with image editing um, and my advert has rocketed because of him. So um, <laughs> if you are successful, you'll, you'll be able to work with Leo as well. You guys can trade ideas and um, help us out. So any, any words from your end, Leo? Uh, yeah, get Canva. Canva's the best. Yes. He taught me Canva. Um, so in terms of uh, team photo, I think Nikita, if you put on together mode, then and if everyone turns on their cameras, I can do a screenshot like a big nice group photo. Okay, so I need to put on together mode. Let's see. Is this how it's done, Leo? Let's see. All right. All right. What so, if you turn on the cameras, then hopefully everyone will sort of populate the virtual hall. Mm. All right. Here we go. Recognize your name, Anna. Good to see your face. This is actually really cute. Isn't it? All right, good to see everybody. So yeah, if everyone, in case everyone's kind of zoned out, if everyone would like to turn on their cameras for like 10 seconds, then we can get everyone together in on this virtual lecture theatre. Yes, <laughs> it's funny seeing some familiar faces, someone in the car. <laughs> I hope you're not driving, Mariella. So I personally see nine people. Can you see? I see loads of my, people. So. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Let's see. All right, let's give it. Let's say in ten seconds, I'll take a photo. So if everyone has ten seconds to turn on their cameras, otherwise we'll just be here for a little while, and I'll give it a count so everyone can smile. So we'll do a countdown. We'll do five, four. Three, two, one. Click. Oh, oh and oh. all right. Yeah, we got a good photo. Yeah, it looks good. I'll send it on the chat. Great, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so um, we have uh, let's see, five more minutes. Anyone else? Good to see you, Andre. <laughs> and see if I see any other faces or names. Does anyone have any any worries, any concerns at all? Um, if you like, you know what, Costa. You know, with regards sure. to sorry, um, creating yeah, advertisements and things. For me, I don't really know how to. I, I know how to use the basics of Canva, basic but is there any but sort of other resource any, aside from? or like other ways of learning how to utilize those things because half the time I just don't have the actual skill to do those type of things. Hmm. So is this for the purpose of SFO UK, uh, the social media role or just in for your SFO rep role? In general, I mean, for me, uh, the only reason I wouldn't have, I had seen the advert for the social media rep role, but for me, I know that I'm not very much 
image based thing like I, i'm not very good at image editing, editing anyway which is why i thought someone else would probably be better for their own for that reason but it's just purely because i don't actually have that skill and i don't know how to learn it <laughs> um so actually it's shown a willingness to learn so i'm not very i i, I used to think i was very um down with the virtual thing but actually there's so many apps that are being made out there to help with video and image editing so it's actually quite easy to learn if I can do it um, I think anyone can however with the SFO UK social media uh, role it's quite varied so we might want you on board for content creating so ideas or helping to capture moments at our conferences or helping with for instance the um, scheduling calendar so it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the physical image or video editing there is so much more to it than than just that or even just helping us with posting on a weekly um, pattern so some of our SFO reps they have created a series of teachings which means they need at least once a week postings of course we can do this on a time basis but sometimes it might be useful or helpful for someone to actually do it for us so it's not just that one role so it's definitely um it's fluid um but leo's leo's there um to help as well i'll do the best i can and what we don't know we can ask um one of my one of my senior colleagues swagatam he is um he's a beaver to my butt head if I can say that, we work really, really closely. Um, he wasn't able to log in today, unfortunately, but he is one of the um, other SFO committee members who knows a lot about IT. So he's also someone we can go to for help. So don't worry, we will provide you with, um, you know, the teachings needed. And if not, we'll, we'll, we'll problem solve, we'll ask someone and they can teach us. Anyone else? Anyone else got any questions? Okay. Has anyone recently um, been successful with applications? Yep. Okay. So this will still be something you can, so to speak, place in your portfolio for the next level of applications okay um, and like everyone else has said collaborations and networking goes a really really long way so I will conclude our meeting let you go off for your dinner um, but it's good to see your faces um, now you've seen mine just um, bear in mind that we do have quite a high admin quite a high admin traffic so we do try to get back to you within um, within a day or two or maximum a week if not then please just email us and um, and we will track things down for you and there's many people working behind the scenes um, it's not just one person so it really is a team effort but um, thank you so much for what you're going to be doing for us over the next 12 months and I really wish you the best with your ENT path and um, if I can do anything to help in the long run, you have my email. And um, yep, that's all I have to say to um, conclude the meeting. So um, thank you all and um, hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye.